Welcome to today's 3D print. We have a TiVo printer. This comes directly from TiVo. They sent me this. And that's not an address, right? No. <laughs> Make sure it didn't have an address on there. So this is the TiVo Neuros Basic. Their new all-in-one, meaning it's like an Ender 3, but it's CR10 sized. CR10 um, competitor update for their Tornado. And apparently there's a basic and a pro version. This is the basic version. I have no idea what the difference is yet. But we are going to take this apart and build it and see how it works. Stay tuned. So as we've come to expect from TiVo and Creality, etc., is extremely good. I'm assuming laser cut or some sort of cut. It's very precision cut. This high density foam where everything is packed in real nice and tight. So I like that. I hope I, I hope to see that continuing. Although it makes me wonder what went here. I mean, there's a hole cut there for something. I wonder if that's where the bigger LCD goes on the Pro version, like if they use the same size box. That'd be interesting to find out. Stay tuned. Can't miss out on the LCD sticker porn, huh? Except this is a giant bed. So we got a big giant piece here. Get your porn music going. Oh, 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 oh. oh it tore. Oh, no. Can I recover? Yes. Oh yeah, one big piece. And of course, don't forget, little porn. See, this is the this is the porn hub of the 3D printing world. Plastic peeling. Yeah. <laughs> so we have the base unit. <laughs> TiVo Neros. <laughs> I think I see what they're aiming for. It looks like they're aiming to try to make the entire bed assembly as lightweight as possible, which would explain why they went back to a DC bed with insulation, because they would have to use the same plate with an AC heat bed, and the AC heat bed would add weight. So the DC heat bed with no glass top, just a sticker that you put on it, and this ultra thin down Y carriage plate should result in a very lightweight bed relative to most printers this size. So I think that's what they're going for. So that will be interesting. But apparently, getting into this thing is pretty easy. You, you got four screws, two on each side, and then this front panel just slides out. And there you go, you have access to everything inside. I believe this is why they have the power supply mounted this way instead of the other way, in order to allow these access to these connections here. It's a pity. Um, I would still prefer it to be the other way, just to avoid stuff going in here. But we'll see. This is There is Wi-Fi on here. And there is an extra space for an... Oh, this heat sink was not on the chip. That's not good. So TiVo, watch your QC on that. The this, second time I did that. This heat sink was not on the stepper chip. It was sitting off to the side. They got moved and shipped it. So what we have inside here is your power supply, your board, your Wi-Fi chip, cooling fan for this board, your... I think this is the okay they had to work that around that interesting and that's your cable going out and this is your MOSFET for your DC heat bed okay wire management's pretty decent I have no complaints looks like a finished edge down there so you shouldn't have to worry about anything getting cut looks like all neurals on all of their connections instead of using wires going into the terminal blocks they have properly crimped on ends that go into the terminal blocks that's very good I like that it looks like they actually did a very good job putting this together. So what board is this? This is a MakerBase Robin Nano 1.1. I believe these are Allegro drivers, so I believe this will need TL smoothers. I'm assuming the Pro version is probably going to come with some quieter drivers. Not bad. We shall see. And I love this. It has little pop-outs here. And that's how they're able to make this whole thing just slide right in very nice that's not bad at all I got the heat bed installed it's just the bolts springs and leveling knobs make sure the protruding part of leveling knob is up a um, couple things. You're going to want to adjust the wheels for your eccentric nuts on your heat bed, and you're going to want to adjust the tension 
for your belt before you install the heat bed because with the heat bed installed it's very hard to get to these two bolts and this is where you want to adjust your tension and it's you're never going to get to your bolts with the included wrench with the heat bed in place so you're going to want to do that before you install the heat bed or if you have one of these handy that'll work afterwards um, to uh, remember to your bed's going to be loose so this will wobble you got to check front and back so that you're checking both sets of wheels and what you do is you tighten up the wheels only enough to stop the wobble. And if you if you feel carefully and look, you can tell which wheel is wobbling. So you can stop tightening this one, get to this one, tighten that up. Okay. And you want to make sure that when you roll this bed back and forth, you don't feel any divots. You don't feel any flat spots on the wheels. That's how you know if you feel flat spots, you're too tight. Okay. The motor itself, these are adjustable on the end, but I think it's better just to leave these alone. And you have a slotted holes that the stepper motor attaches to here on this bracket so loosen all four bolts this motor will then move forwards and backwards this way okay push it back with your hand tighten the bolts up there you go you just tension your belt you get that little bit of a twang but not too much too tight is a problem so we will now go on to installing the gantry okay next you drop the gantry into place your vertical gantry make sure this is high enough not to be in the way and you put the four bolts in from the bottom to attach it. The next step will be to attach this really spiffy little modular hot end. This little hot end, two bolts, and it just bolts right on just like that. That's pretty slick. I'd like to see TiVo offer these brackets for sale so people can make their own, you know, different hot ends for their printer. Put a direct drive on here. Put a mosquito hot end on here. You know, come up with your own design, put an E3D V6 on here and just have it bolt right up with that bracket. It'd be pretty nice. Alrighty, so I have adjusted the tightness of the eccentrics. This one feels a little odd. This top wheel is loose for some reason, and yet the other two are properly snugged. I'm not entirely sure why. I'm guessing this triangle arrangement is a little cockeyed, but it seems to move up and down cleanly without a problem. So you roll your axis back and forth and make sure both ends go up and down together. If there's a large difference between when that one goes up and this one goes up, then that one's too tight. So you got to loosen that up a little bit. Make sure these aren't too tight. You should be able to, the wheels should have friction, but if you force them, they should be able to roll inside the extrusion. So see how I'm, ma I'm making this wheel roll? It's taking force for me to do that, but I can make it roll. That's how you know you got enough tightness. On this one, if you don't have enough tightness, if you grab this and pull it front and back, it'll jiggle inside the rail. So loosen it up until this jiggles front to back, and then tighten it until it stops jiggling, and then you know you're good. Um, the hot end bolts on to steel inserts, so you're bolting steel into steel through the aluminum, so you don't have to worry about stripping anything. Very nice. Um, that's attached. I do have to check the tightness of this assembly. It's definitely not too loose, but it does feel like it might be too tight, so I will adjust that eccentric nut so it's not so tight. Same thing. Loosen the eccentric nut until this wobbles, then tighten the eccentric nut until this stops wobbling. Then stop, you're good. Next is to connect all the wiring, and we should be ready for first power up after installing the bed sticker. I think we're ready to go. I've plugged it in and it didn't explode. That's a good start. <laughs> that means I didn't screw anything up yet. But um, bed sticker has been applied, cables have been plugged in. One thing of note. A piece of tape for your ribbon cable use it what you want to do oh i do need to attach my z motor where is that there it is you want to make sure that your bed cable is taped to the top rail of the printer so right here you want to tape it to the top rail of the printer what this will do is when this bed comes back it makes sure this cable rolls over the... Oh, you can't even see that. Actually, I can adjust that. Yay. There we go. So you tape it here. And the idea is that when this bed cable is forward, it's not restricted. Okay. And when it comes back, that cable rolls back like a cable chain. And keeps that cable from getting bent under here. Which is going to really stress this connection where the wires are. Even though it has strain relief. So make sure you do that. Otherwise, just follow the directions when you assemble it. And now we are going to attempt power up. 
see if the heaters all work, although I still need to adjust the eccentric nut on this one, and we will try a test print, so stay tuned. Well, there you go, guys. The TiVo Neros is built. Uh, I think they have a, a spelling problem when they convert Chinese to English. Uh, this is supposed to be spelled N-E-R-Y-S, not N-E-R-E-U-S. You know, just replace that E-U with a Y, you know, TiVo Neris. You know. <laughs> um, very pleased with it. No problems. It's printing excellently. It does have salmon skin, so I suggest ordering TL Smoothers. It's got the Allegro driver, so they're going to have the salmon skin issue. But I printed the Marvin, and it is quite an excellent print. I have no complaints. This is using the silk filament, and it's nice and strong. I also printed a small vase just to get a feel for it. Again, no problems. Excellent print. A couple of suggestions. I would like to see a removable bed. Just a, a fiberglass plate with this sticker on it, and then clips would be nice just so that because you're using only this bed in order to keep weight down, which I understand, um, that means every force that a user applies to get their print off is being applied to the bed, and that's not good. I'd rather have a flex plate I can remove, even just a piece of fiberglass, a little G10 with the um, clips. Wheels are nice. I'd like to see you go back to the induction end stops you were using. Those were nice. But in general, no complaints. Printer went together well. Um, I didn't have any major issues, not even too many minor issues. The printer is actually pretty quiet except for the steppers, so I'm going to put some stepper dampers on here, some TL smoothers on here, and I'm going to replace the fan and the power supply. The rest of the fans are actually nearly silent. It's just this power supply fan that's making noise, so that's a $7 replacement. I got some 60 by 10 millimeter fans I'm going to install on there, just one on the power supply. And that's it. This printer will be in pretty decent shape. I like it. It's too bad I can't put a wham bam sheet on here because it's a 320 by 320 bed and the wham bams are 310 by 310. So I won't be able to install a wham bam sheet on here, which is a pity. I'd like that. But I am now printing a very large pair of pliers. I don't know if this is going to work in this silk filament, but we shall try and see what happens. I will see you guys later with some sample prints.